Hi, this is Terry Bergen from The Entertainers. Welcome to Real Time. Today I'm speaking with the corporate ninja, Ron Lee. G'day, Ron. Terry. What a beautiful part of the world you've brought us to. Isn't it? It's fabulous. It's 45 acres in the middle of uh, the eastern suburbs. And yeah, I don't want anyone to come along to this, but uh, it's, it's a sanctuary. Every morning that I'm at home, I'll come in here and do my moving meditation and still meditation. And it's, it's fabulous, as you can see. It is a beautiful spot. And uh, as Ron said, it's, it's like a good surfing spot. The locals will not tell you where we are. And I've been sworn to secrecy. And if I do tell you, Ron's going to kill me. And he does the... Something like that. <laughs> so, Ron, who are you? What makes you tick? And give us a basic idea of, of, of where you've come from, what you've done, how long you've been around. Okay, I've been doing the Corporate Ninja since about probably 1987 and it came from you know our greatest voids determine our greatest values so whatever we think is missing that's that's what our value is when I was a kid I went to school during the middle of the uh, white Australia policy okay and I was picked on mercilessly a uh, name calling was a daily occurrence I got into fights and so so what what was my void my void was personal power so what was my value personal power. So in 79 I took up martial arts and I've done eight different forms since then and I sh using Eastern Western philosophies, practical metaphysics and martial arts, I show people how to be more powerful internally and externally. So wow. my, yeah, so my void and therefore my value is serving other people. Fantastic. Now I will say I read your book through the week and it is one of the best reads that I've had for a long time. I talk about practical tips very easy to read. If I may just hold that up. Sure. This is What Shintaro Taught Me uh, by Ron Lee. And I would suggest that um, you give me a call or get on to Ron. Ronlee.com.au? Uh, the corporate, it's, it's, cor 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 it's corporate-ninja.com. Corporate-ninja.com. And try and get yourself a copy of this because it is just absolutely chock. Now, what inspired you Thank to you. write this book? Well... Funnily enough, I'd been doing Corporate Ninja for about probably 12 years, and people kept coming up to me and asking, have you written a book? Do you have some resources? I want to, I want to get something. And it, it kept happening, and, and I thought finally in, in 2000, I, I thought I'd better write a book and get it out there and satisfy this. Uh, and I, so I didn't actually write it to make a profit, but I had partial sponsorship, and I ended up being in profit in three months. Not and surprising, Ron. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. It really is a great read. Now, I guess let's get down to brass tacks here. If a client of the entertainers wanted to engage you for a conference, what are the types of challenges they would be facing that you could address for them? Well, the constant feedback, Terry, that I've had over the last 24 years that I've been doing this um, has been, one is they get conditioned, even in a one-hour um, hoax or keynote presentation, they get conditioned to focus on solutions rather than problems. They, they look in the same direction rather than at each other, so there's less politics in the, in the company. And they get inspired to raise their expectations of their performance, both as, as teams and as individuals. So it affects their personal lives, the seven areas of their, their life, and uh, makes a difference to their income, it makes a difference to their, their family their social life, their intellect even, and their spirituality. Yeah, wonderful. Now you mentioned the word hoax. Perhaps you could explain, not giving everything away, but what, what is a hoax? Well, I normally go on as um, a Japanese industrialist. Um, for some reason they want me to do Asian. Can't understand why. <laughs> but, but I go on as a Japanese industrialist who's a personal friend of the, uh, the, the president, the world president, and he has 30 companies, two in Japan's top 100, studied martial arts from an early age, uses the philosophies in corporate management and group takeover strategies, and, and he goes on, he's in Australia, if it's Australia, he's in Australia at the time to look for business opportunities and to, to play some golf, and as a personal favour to the world president, he's going to share his success strategies. And then he goes up and gets everybody standing up doing exercises where the first one they become they partner off and they become physically stronger in about 15 seconds and then we do some other martial arts type uh, exercises and they become they become physically stronger and mentally more able to tune in 
Okay. Yeah, and less focused on themselves. And then you do you spill the beans or? Yeah, during question time, there's normal. Well, I'll make an announcement, or the character makes an announcement. Can you just give me a, a quick example of the of the accent you use? Okay, he'll go up there and and say, "Domo right, arigato, mina sama, ohayo gozaimas, nakanaka i takoro desune." And the audience will often look like this. And, and then I'll say, perhaps I will speak English. And then we go from there with the accent. And do you actually get out into the g'day mate? I was just sort of joking you all along anyway. I'm actually Well, Australian sometimes I do. That, yeah. <laughs> well, during question time, there's always, I never set this up. There's always an appropriate question for coming out of character. And, you know, and I'll, and I'll go a bit Australian or just as myself. Yeah. You know, and I'll say, look, bugger, I go from, oh, yeah. To uh, bug it if I know. <laughs> but no, I'm, look, I'm only here to. Yeah. Which so, would be very impactful, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Mind you, I haven't done one of those um, for about two days. Okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it has it has a massive impact. And the thing is, after I get out of character, I will debrief because I've done eight different forms of martial arts, uh, internally, and external, hard and soft. So, all of the stuff we do in the hoax is for real but it's just done in character. Yeah. And then when I come out of character, I'll debrief it and say, look, you know, you were quite validated in believing this stuff and being taken in because it actually works and I do it in the real training. Terrific. And Terrific. Uh, so it's, yeah, so that I totally validate they're being taken in. Yeah. So it's not, it's not just like, ha ha, I fooled you. They get, they get real takeaway value from they're, the whole thing. They're sucked in the whole deal, yeah. yeah. Okay, Ron, uh, what's important to the entertainers, as I'm sure it is to yourself, you've been a professional for how many years have you been on the speaking? Uh, full time for 24. Full time for 24. So here's a man with a heck of a lot of experience. How do you handle, um, I guess, making sure that the client's needs are met? Oh, I... And their outcomes are, you know... I ask them. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty easy. <laughs> I, just say, I just say, what do you want to achieve from the, the conference? Then I'll do a little bit of background research as well as the brief. And sometimes I have another agenda. Sometimes I'll see that, you know, they just want increased sales, for example. That's my brief. But then I'll look at the company and meet some of the people and I might think they need more of a team attitude as well. So I'll make sure that they get exactly what they want. Plus, to get that result, I might need to add some other things. So yeah. I'll do that also. Yep. I'm very results driven. Absolutely, and I've noticed with Ron, he's very intuitive. So he just picks up on stuff that um, you, 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 maybe yourself you wouldn't actually pick up on, which is I think is a great uh, asset to have. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Is that okay? I'm up for it. Okay. <laughs> Give me your three top tips, whether it be in health, business, or life. Oh, all right. Whatever you, whatever you don't think you can't do, you can do. I started out, um, I was watching, in 1986, I was watching a television show called Star Search with my girlfriend. And I said to her, those comedians are hopeless. I could do better than that. And she said, why don't you? So you did? So I rang up, I got on the show. I had never done stand-up comedy, even at a party. And I did an audition, went on the show. I had two and a half minutes. I did the two and a half minutes and I won. So then I went on to the next show, did my second two and a half minutes, but, and then I won. You kept winning. But the thing was, I only had, I only written five minutes and I had to come up with another two and a half minutes the following week. <laughs> and, I, and when you haven't written comedy before, it's not easy. That's right. So uh, anyway, I ended up on four shows and um, the last one was pretty bad because, you know, I was just dragging stuff up from anywhere. Great and, example. And number two? Uh, number two is with now this is this is a this is a big issue with a lot of people and it presses buttons so I'm, that's why I'm a little reluctant in the in the 1950s ten diseases were considered to be psychosomatically based mm -hmm. by the general Western medical community that is ten diseases were they determined that it was decided by here and here in the in 1995 they did the same survey amongst the same group of people, Western practitioners, and they came up with 350 diseases okay. that were psychosomatically based. I believe that 
most illnesses, depending on the stage, can be, can, people can cure themselves using various processes, and I've done that myself. I've helped people cure themselves of various uh, ailments, and also mental and emotional issues that are not based in, um, in, in illness or disease. So I believe that the power of the mind um, and chi energy and belief systems can make a massive difference to every area of your life. Once again, some of that's covered off in Ron's book. Um, so if you wanted to check that out, once again, your website, corporate-ninja.com. Yes. And your third tip, Ron? My third tip is, is that, I mean, the wealth button. A lot of people are hitting the wealth button. I've had, I've had people quintuple their incomes in a year. Why? Because they just remove the limitation. It's a psychological limitation. There's always a, like a ceiling. If you dissolve the ceiling or the barrier or however you perceive it, in Aikido training, we focus a thousand miles into the distance or to the horizon. So whatever is in front of us is inconsequential. Mm. All right. So you focus beyond, and I and with one, well, it was St. George Bank personal banking. I I asked them to double their targets, but the manager decided not to double the targets. He quadrupled the targets and some of his, and he called me seven months later and he said, some of my teams are on track to, to, to do 375% of what they did last year. Wow. And so he's, he's just extended what I do further. Yeah, yeah, that's great, Ron. Okay, look, I think um, that'll probably do us for now. I think it'll give you a good idea of who Ron is and uh, what he stands for. Uh, very good choice of speaker, let me tell you. If you want to get in touch with Ron, do it through the entertainers. The website should pop up over here or somewhere around here, somewhere soon. And uh, jump on the website and give us a call. This has been Terry Bergen for the entertainers in real time, saying goodbye from me. And from me, the Corporate Ninja. I was in my head waking up like I was king.